This conference will now be recorded. All right. Cool. Good to see everybody on here. And you know the primary things, if you have a question, interrupt us and, and ask it, and we'll do our best to answer. So other than that, we'll just kind of chew the fat a little bit and see what's happening. So uh, how you doing, Jim? Good. I completely missed last week. I had my I hadn't seen my sister in four years, and she had just showed up. They live traveling the country. I figured that'd be sort of rude just to say, wait a minute, I ain't going to be available for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll get to see you one time for a long time. I think I'll go do my uh, Thunder webinar instead. <laughs> they may not like that very much. Well, the, so. the exciting part was is they loved the property and stuff so much, um, they're more likely moving here. Cool, cool. And we have lived close to each other and over probably close to 20 years. Yeah, awesome. All right, man. So, uh, well, cool. Um, like I said, if anybody has anything, just let me know. Um, I haven't been doing anything with the fiber or, or, or anything this week. I've been working on back-end systems, integrations and stuff in the support system to make it uh, smoother and easier and quicker and more efficient. So some a lot of that boring behind-the-scenes stuff. Okay, Keith's got a question here. Let's see. Uh, why is the four inch lens position with the nozzle so much higher than the two inch? So yes, uh, it is so that you can bury the focus into the material without crashing the nozzle. That, that is precisely why. Um, and I've got a, uh, basics of video, uh, or basics of focus video in the, uh, article that kind of shows you, uh, on the knowledge base that shows you a little bit about that. But yeah, the focus to the surface is 10 millimeters. Uh, but if you want to focus into the material, then that'll give you up to nine millimeters, you know, of penetration uh, into the material if you need it. So, but that's a good question. And, you know, we talked about how the four inch also, uh, it, there's actually a deficit with the power because the spot size, you know, is almost twice as big. So you have the same amount of power uh, on a surface area that's twice as much. So your beam density is actually cut in half. So um, you may have to kick a little kick a little more power to it because it's actually less efficient uh, and it burns a wider kerf. So there's more, you know, off gas and more material that's burnt and the kerf is wider. Um, but the benefit is still great when you're cutting thicker materials so you get a straighter cut. So it's pretty crazy how all that stuff works. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if you do. Do you cut a lot of thick stuff, Jim? Like, I know you probably use a lot of natural woods and stuff, don't you? Yeah, I haven't delved into the cutting a lot of the thick stuff yet. I'm still trying to get antiques out of the shop so I can focus on this thing 100%. I mean, I've been on it, but it's still been more or less the thinner stuff. Yeah. Uh, Keith said it seems to be about a 14 millimeter ideal focus. Um, and you might want to submit a ticket about that and have anybody else that has that thing uh, just email support at thunderlaserusa.com because that may be something we need to look into remember uh, mine was really odd too because you told me to submit a ticket because i come up with i for, i've got it written down but it i think it was in that territory okay all um, right yeah let me look into that i may ask a, i may post that question on uh the forums, you know, or on the groups and see if anybody else is experiencing that. Maybe we can see what's up. So, yeah, um, I was about a 13 and a half ish on the idea when I did the ramp test. Yeah, of course, that's just to the surface. But, yeah, that does seem a little odd. It, it may vary by a millimeter, a millimeter and a half, but it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be that far out. Unless the lens is upside down or position, I'm, I'm not sure. I um, double checked all that. Yeah, that's weird. I'm I'm gonna make a report about that so that we can follow up on it and see what's going on. So anyway, how's it going with you, Travis? Uh, it's going pretty good. So yeah, I logged in and tried grabbing my uh, capture card and so you guys would have stared inside my laser the whole time. I'm like, yeah, no, that's not what I want. <laughs> so I'd hop out, hop back in. Cool, cool. All right. Um, yeah, that's crazy about the four inch. They're saying, 
uh, Travis, and I think we did touch on it before that, that it doesn't seem to be 10 millimeters focused, you know, when you're doing a ramp test on it, that it's sometimes like 13 or 14. And that sounds a little bit. It, it's off. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know, uh, you know, you can be off by a couple of millimeters. We even got a, you know, on the two inch, we say six millimeters. Uh, to the surface, you know, for the focal point, but still that can vary a millimeter, a millimeter and a half. After you do your ramp test, you can dial yeah. it in. So I assume those other lenses are the same way. And maybe that's not that big of a difference since you're dealing with a spot size that's twice the size, maybe. Yeah, it, you know, it's really distance. not. It also depends, like, if you're running uh, the silicone washers um, between the metal housing and the ear lens. Um, I don't remember if they come with those in them, but I've added uh, the silicone washers in all of mine. Um, gotcha. Yeah, so I don't think I they do. Two inch did not have a silicone washer, and I added one in. Yeah. So yeah. and of course that changes the focus of it and everything like that. Right. What's, the benefit, what's the benefit of the silicone washer? Uh, keeps you from cracking your lens if you accidentally over tighten it. That's important. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and that can happen. That that crystal uh, APC put out a little video about it, and they use some like Teflon screws and a little mount, and just barely put a little pressure on, just finger tight, and you could see the distortion in the yeah. lens. So yeah, it's a synthesized crystal. It's not like glass. It's actually pretty fragile. So you're putting so, the washer under between the lens and the ring that's the retaining ring for the lens. Uh, no, you put it between the lens and the housing. Okay. So we, have we any... want the ring to give even pressure on the lens, um, and right. then uh, the silicone ring, if there's any imperfections or anything like that, that'll help absorb and keep it nice and flat in there. Do we have any specs or anything on the which O-rings to use or sizes um, you use or anything? Yeah, they, they aren't expensive. I'm trying to remember where I got mine. It's been such a long time, but they're only like 10 or 15 cents a ring. Um, they're really right. cheap. Um, so uh, yeah, if you if you look around, I'm sure you can just find them on Amazon or something. They're usually in like five or ten packs, uh, but you need a it's a 20 millimeter ring is what you need. That's what I was looking for the diameter. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, Keith said that his is 13.66. Am I being at 13.56 or 54? That could just be due to what he was seeing versus what I'm seeing with our eyeballs. So it yep. seems like it is around the 13 and a half ish. Mm -hmm range it could be I, i've got one over here that i've had for a couple of years i'll do a test on it and see what i come up with too yeah because I, I know mine mine's at like 10.5 but i'm running an aftermarket lens i'm running a, a, a iivi lens on mine yeah. that's actually what we ship with the thunders well we did they they found another source that's just as good but we were carrying the two six branded optics uh, for okay. our stuff for for a while but between them and APC, American Photonics, I think those are the two top. I mean, yeah. two six basically kind of invented zinc silicon. <laughs> yeah. Is you that know. what their name actually is? Is two six? Yeah. Okay. I, I've always called them IIVI. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's they their logo and everything's Roman numerals, but they yeah I've always heard it called two six. Okay. But doesn't matter. They got good lenses. We can call them anything yep. we want. So. Yep. Yep. They'll take our money no matter what. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Anything fun and exciting week. happened last week? I know, yeah, I know I could watch the video, but. Um, no, I nothing really. Um, a lot of goofing off. Uh, there, <laughs> there was actually a little bit of goofing off. Oh, I missed a good one then. Totally unusual, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I see Mike joined us. Uh, how are you doing? Let's see if you can get his. See if you can get your mic on. There we go. Hey, I'm doing great. How are y'all? Doing well, doing well. So yeah, Mike, Mike and his wife came out and did a demo last week, and and I'm hoping that they're still looking at Thunder. I'm surprised they're even on here today. I probably I was surprised I didn't run them off, but uh, <laughs> they wanted to kick the they wanted to kick the tires on a Thunder. So uh, they come by and visited for a little bit. You were very nice and spent a couple of hours, I'm sure, which were very long for you, but we enjoyed it. We 
we've got one on order. Awesome. Awesome. So do you have any questions while you're getting ready or anything? I know you've been doing your homework for quite a while, it seems. So. Well, I'm still trying to soak it up. So I, I, I realize at this point, I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> so gotcha. I'm just going to sit here and listen to you guys. and. Uh, sure. And uh, yeah, that, that cheat sheet's a good thing to go ahead and start on. You know, it'll it, and it's got some stuff about Lightburn where you can go ahead and download Lightburn and play with it a little bit. And if you get it past your 30 day trial and you don't have your key yet, you can uh, email Lightburn and they'll extend it for you a little bit. You know, just tell them that you got a machine on the way and you want to extend your trial till you get your uh, key from from Thunder. Um, and then that way you can go ahead and start playing and get a little, you know, get behind the eight ball on the on the software part anyway, at least, you know, learning your way around it and we can help with that. So yeah, that's true. I, I'll certainly do that. I do have one quick question for you. Mm -hmm. um, having to redo some electricity. So I'm wondering what plug does a receptacle, what, what do I need? What, what machine you're looking at a 3580, right? Correct. Okay. So let me pull this up. We've got uh, the main power requirements and we'll, we're going to prescribe a 20 amp dedicated outlet for yours, um, which is going to be this NEMA 520 plug and your laser will come with a NEMA 520 uh, actually receptacle. It'll come with one of these. Your laser will come with that one. So you'll want a dedicated 20, which usually is a, a 20 amp, uh, 110 volt single pole uh, breaker and at least a uh, what 12 to but if it's a yeah, long run yeah, 12, you might 10. want to run 10 to uh and then the the nema 520 uh receptacle okay good to know uh, i figured that information was in there somewhere but uh and, just uh, talked I'll to an electrician today and was we were talking sure. about that and i realized i didn't know what questions to ask Gotcha. Sure. And uh, I, I linked that in there. And then also you'll probably see it quite a bit. You may have to go back over to the home, uh, but you'll be able to find that cheat sheet pretty easy. There it is right there. And it's got links to everything you need to know between, you know, there's a setup video and stuff like that. Uh, here's about the main power requirements, how to vent it. You know, so we've got an article uh, on what comes with the machine as far as venting and, how, you know, some suggestions on what to use to vent it out. Um, aftermarket fans, all kinds of neat things. So, yeah. Uh, and if you're having an electrician run a dedicated 20, um, I usually recommend to people that they run two dedicated 20s. Yeah. Um, that way you have room to grow. So later on, if you want to do an external air compressor with more power, you've got the capacity there to do it already. No, yeah. I mean, there's no sense in paying an electrician to come out twice to do it. Yeah. Yeah, you beat me too, because that's. Lordy, what I was waiting on to say. <laughs> yep. If you got to run one, you might as well run two because it's cheaper. Yep. Let me get my little notepad out here, my little sticky notes, and I'm going to make myself a sticky note to add that to that main power thing to recommend if you're going to, you know, for future to go ahead and run two while you're doing it because that is a good idea. And I say it all the time, but it's not in the document. Make sure if he does that, though, don't run both plugs off of 120 amp circuit. Make sure they, they are won't. dedicated. If they're licensed, they won't. Or if they care or know what they're doing, they won't. They they can put 215, they can put a gang, a two gang 15 on one, uh, but they can't put a two gang 20, or they're not supposed to anyway. Yeah, but I've seen all kinds of stuff. The whole thing, that's what I was yeah. just saying. Make sure they ain't shortcutting <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on the bright side, you don't have to run the power that I have in my laser room. <laughs> <laughs> for real you've got a lot of stuff going on in there i'm sure a little bit so now you won't regret it when i bought mine it well exceeded my expectations so you're gonna love it and i'm stuck in indiana for the last three weeks so i'm really pissed that i can't be at home playing with it <laughs> yeah yeah and here, here in a few weeks, I'm getting ready to go on vacation for a week. But when I get back, um, I'll be running a video that will stream on uh, um, the Thunder Laser uh, Facebook group. Um, but it'll be a, a video on, uh, you know, things to get you by kind of the, there's a little break of fall season where a lot of people kind of struggle what to sell, what to make with their laser. You know, we aren't truly into fall yet and we aren't, there's no holidays around or anything like that. Um, so I'll be streaming a video on that. Um, basically, if you follow it, uh, you should be able to pull in about 100 to $120 an hour off your laser. And that's in, that's in profit after all your running expenses, by the way. I look forward to that. That'd be great. 
Yep. Makes it so you pay off your laser really fast. Yeah. <laughs> That's important. Yep. Yes. So, so hey, Brian, Mark, how are you? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Speaking of the cheat sheet, I am the world's biggest procrastinator, but I'm finally setting up my machine today. Mm -hmm. And I got to the point in the video where I'm, I'm just running the laser head. But my settings weren't all at zero when I turned it on. The Z was at 3,000. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Doesn't say what to do if they're not all at zero. It, do I need to you, reset something or? You don't have to pay any attention to that. Uh, okay. And, and until the Z axis hits an end stop or the home end stop, it will not know where it's at, and it really doesn't matter. And the reason we don't have that thing fully automatic is when you turn the machine on, we don't want it homing and doing things in case you leave a drill on the bed or something like that. We don't want it to move without you wanting it to. So that's okay. totally irrelevant. As soon as you autofocus, it'll know where everything's at. Got it. So just ignore that for now and keep going. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Sure. At least that's the way I run mine. Somebody <laughs> okay. else may say differently. <laughs> I trust you. Okay. So. Hey, Mark, how are you? Hey, Brian. Just thought I'd check in and see what everyone's doing. Hey, man. I was thinking about you the other day. I was thinking about your focus tool. Are you still doing those? Oh yeah. Okay. That and uh, the the wrenches. Yep. Okay. All right. I need to refresh everybody on that because I used mine the other day and I I was thinking about it. I was like, man, this is so much easier to hold than that little piece of metal, you know. Yeah. So yeah. the focus tool is up on the uh, on the file list. Oh, that's right. But the yeah the uh, lens uh, spanner wrenches is what, what I was I guess referring to. Yeah. Yeah. More. So. Um, what do you, is it? What does his lens uh, removal thing look like? Do you have yours with you, Brian? Um, I, I, I did. I got one right Where here. Do you do, Mark? He's gone. I, I'm always curious to see what people are coming up with with this stuff. Oh, it's it's handy. Yeah, I've, and I have one that I made that's a little 3D printed one. Mm -hmm. um, that's just kind of a round tube with some. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's the, one side. This is another side. Huh. Yeah. It, it, this this slips in this slips in the tube, and there's a little tit on the end, and an internal boss to keep it from slipping out. Okay. And uh, yeah, it works really good. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, it's it's kind of similar to the one that I have. Just that one looks a lot nicer. <laughs> mm -hmm. My mind's a home built, made in you know, a couple minutes type thing. Yeah. 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 These things, they, they take, I print uh, six at a time and it takes like six hours. So they, it's a long print. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll get with you again, Martin, get the info again on that or where you want people to point you. And I'll mention that because uh, that's a handy tool. And I think a lot of people would like it. So, but I know, you know, there was some buzz around it a little bit and then it kind of, you know, things kind of die off after everybody sees it. So we'll, we'll put it back out there and, let the buzz get back up again. So, because that is a cool, that, that's cool very thing. nice of you. Sure, sure. So, other than that, how's everything else? Pretty good. I see um, Jason Reif is uh, making new new um, new parts, or he's changing some of the plastics out for uh, all metal now. What's mm -hmm. going on there? Yeah, and it should. Uh, hopefully, we're looking at like mid September. Um, they're going to roll out the all metal. There may be one or two little pieces that are still. Uh, 3D printed, but the majority, all the bearing, you know, flanges and all of that stuff, it'll all be uh, milled and and all metal. So that'll be good. And silicone O-rings, um, you know, and a, a number of other things. So he's had it in the works for a while, um, but he's getting all the parts together. He's got some prototypes and he's ready. And then he'll sell the kits, the retrofit kits, at some point down the line, you know, somewhere on the horizon for people that want to go to all metal, you know. So. So yeah. hopefully mid-September. And we're going to revamp the documentation and take new pictures and kind of spruce all that up and, you know, have some better uh, tutorials and stuff, Thunder-specific stuff as well. So okay, we'll good. Revamp the whole program. Mm -hmm. I sure use mine a lot, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a real nice add-on to the Thunder laser. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and they've proven to be super solid, you know, and I know there's another one floating around out there that's thunder, thunder specific now. And, you know, 
machine wise, um, I don't know. I, I'm sure we'll start seeing some stuff out there about it. Um, you know, but there's enough room out there for everybody. You know, if somebody wants to use one of those on their machine, that's totally fine. I don't know that much about them yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to watch, you know, but, uh, you know, with the, with the Rotoboss coming out all metal or for the most part, I think that's, that's going to even the playing field. So you can just pick which one you like, probably kind of like Chevy and Ford, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day. So I guess it hopefully just boil down to preference. I'm sure they're both good, good units. I think Todd already did a little bit of a review. Uh, against those two so we'll see how that goes hey brian have you seen or heard of anyone using um the rotary platens um on the lasers uh, typically they're for fiber lasers but i've seen a couple people modify them for co2s you mean like those cheese plates that have all the pre-drilled screws and tap screw holes in them and everything uh, yeah kind of yeah or, they're just a big a big round plate and they've got pre-cut out uh spots for like either dog tags or you know uh Oh, well, like the cheetah the jig? You talking, about those, you talking about those that cheetah jig that Jeremy and those guys are doing? Uh, hold there, on, let me there's a couple of them make a, a, a kit. Your mic's off, Jim, if you're talking to me. I think the one he's talking about is like a flat rotary that circles like a lazy susan type scenario yeah. i think oh, that's yeah. what he's talking so about it is similar. i just looked it up it is similar to those cheetah jigs but there's a, a motor so instead of yeah, yeah. using it as a tumbler rotary it actually rotates the i know what you mean yeah somebody had one of those that was it was a rotary but it, it was you know it had the you could turn it up 90 degrees uh, and they got a, um, th they just bought a motor, you know, a lead shine motor driver combo that was compatible, uh, with the seven pin connector. And they were going to try, they were going to hook that rotary up that way. So yeah, I'm sure you could use one of those in there and turn it into a turntable if that's what you're after. Yeah. Um, now if you have, cause I know that my, I don't know if the programming will do it. Huh? I don't know if the light burn programming will do it. You know what I mean? How do you tell it to spin? Uh, and then stop and move to the next spot. I don't know how you'd lay it out. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, yeah, I might have to reach out to uh, what's his face over at Lightburn and see see if that's something he can look into. <laughs> He'll probably say no because I'll be like the only person wanting it. But hey, yeah, that's... it's the thing I see would be an indexing issue. But if they were doing it with that other software, I don't know why. Light burden could yeah. control it the same way. Well, the other thing is, is those motors have encoders in them, so it, it would keep up with where it's at. So, you know, as far as that goes, that wouldn't be an issue. I think it would be able to index itself as long as there wasn't any play in the drivetrain. Yeah, basically, and I'm I'm looking because once I get uh, uh, one of those Thunder fibers, um, you know, I was gonna the first thing I'm gonna do. I always do it. I'm gonna modify it. And I want to put one of those rotaries on it, so that way when I'm doing dog tags and pins mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, I can just keep that thing running, and I can just pull out the old ones and you know not have any downtime on it. Yeah. Yeah, and Jeremy Jones, I think, is messing with that stuff. Those cheetah jigs, he's doing it on fiber, and doing exactly what you say. Okay. I believe that's him. There's probably more than he's. There's probably more than that. But like I said, you know, I just jumped into the fiber thing, you know, when I knew the about Aurora, so. It, you know, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still green on that, all of that yeah, stuff. Whenever you want, uh, I see it sitting there in the background. You can ship it on up to me. I'll play around and tell you how it is. <laughs> I've put more time on that thing than I have my Novus and my Odin. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty nuts. But uh, I saw Grant was on here. He's he's uh, manning the phones by himself for a little while, so he may not answer if we talk and say anything. That may be why he's grayed out right now. He's might be on the phone. I've seen him on here twice. No, he's on here twice. He's just busy. Is he? Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm on here for my computer and then my phone. I don't gotcha. want to connect this to the computer that I can't get calls. Oh, so. I see you now. Okay, you're just like tall and skinny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why I had to switch my cameras and I messed up when I logged back in again and put on my wide angle camera. It makes me look like I'm 800 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Well, like I said, if anybody's got anything, let's keep it going. Cause I don't, I don't ever plan this stuff. 
That's are they getting caught up on getting the thunder cams out? Because I noticed while I was gone, mine showed up at the house, so I hadn't been home to play with it. We are making headway, and uh, as soon as we get the pipeline filled back up, we're going to make sure we have enough on the shelf so that we don't get caught with their pants down again, even if there is a chip famine. So <laughs> at least that's the intent. So, um, since we're talking about stuff, um, Grant, should I touch on the HR head stuff a minute? You can, yeah. We're down to five, right? Or something like that? I need to go look. I haven't been able to look yet, but so, let me go check. A while back, one of the founders of Beam Buddy passed away, and the other uh, half of it is having some trouble getting the the people that are supplying the parts for them to believe that he's part of it. So he's having to go through a bunch of red tape and paperwork and send legal documents and, and things like that to work out some things so he can get it going again. So there may be a chance that we may have to send out a few HR heads that are the OEM Thunder ones. And I've got documentation and, and reports on how each of those perform against one another. And there's not a whole lot of difference. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there because there may be a little bit of a shortage on a beam buddy for another month or so until he gets back up into full production. So how do you know if you have a beam buddy or a OEM? The color. The color. It's it's well, yeah, and they're a little they bit look different. different. They look different. I'm trying to find the the beam buddy is a darker like royal blue and the uh the HR head is like is a bright blue, kind of like the rails and gantry. Here we go. So this is a document that's based off of the Chinese report for these. And this is the dot test. And this is not against the two high R HR lenses. This is against the standard two inch lens and the beam buddy. Uh, and they do some testing and all that. But if we go down here and look at this PDF, it has all of them in there. It has that. And then it has the, Thunder laser HR head versus the beam buddy head. And it actually fared just a little bit better. Um, not a whole lot of difference, but there's the spot size. But there's the difference from the bottom anyway. Uh, okay, so yeah, mine's the darker blue with the flat bottom. Which one is that one? That one is the beam buddy. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you can tell the difference. But it is a brighter blue. It's not a true thunder blue like our other heads it's it's it'll be a little bit different color then and that's not always the case it depends on the manufacturer it may vary a little bit but we just want to get them as close to blue as we can but, so what you're saying is i need to give you my credit card number and if i want a beam buddy right now uh that's a grant question <laughs> what size laser do you have i have the 35 100. uh you might be able to at that one um Brian hates it when I tell people this, but you throw that beam buddy on, you should be able to uh, cut razor blades. All uh, right, I'm Travis. We talked about it. Grant comes on here to be my filter, not yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you I, go. Actually, it does look really cool, though, because you can take that, uh, that HR head um, and you can do some really cool engravings on razor blades and stuff and then dole them up. And they make, you know, like if you have a, We've done a couple of them like that for uh, warehouse people that were retiring and stuff. And, um, you know, they're always going through razor blades. So we've actually done little retirement uh, razor blades as gifts. Wow. Um, that they, come, they come out looking pretty cool. Wow. I got it here, Brian. Did you pull it? What? You got one? Yeah. I found it the other day. Me? Oh, is this that is the Thunder one? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know what's wrong with their search. They just got a goofy website. It's just yeah. It's but see, nothing. is that the one? What's the orifice? How big is how 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 big's the aperture on that one? Okay, yeah, that's the that's the one with the really wide orifice, uh, and that one will suck smoke in like crazy. It gets dirty like crazy. That's why everybody hated them. Can't you just use one of the other ones? One of the other heads. Yeah, the no. nozzles. See, that's the problem with these these compound lenses. Uh, the focus is so tight, you can only be a couple of millimeters away from the material. So you can't you, you can't have a big old nozzle on there. That's why they're so flat and so low profile. Gotcha. Because of the focal distance. Now the, the debris that that collects on the bottom of those of those HR housings 
uh, has anyone had any success with uh, streaming a horizontal uh, stream of air in addition to the air coming out the nozzle to, to try and keep that clean? Does that work for anybody? So, no, let me see if I can get this. I've got the stuff to do it, but I haven't tried it yet. Yeah, uh, so on, on this one, I mean, you can see mine's, mine's fairly clean here. Um, yeah. And I don't have my right piece on here. This is my old one. I'm sure Brian can see that with the little itty bitty tiny tube. Yeah. Um, but there is, you can get all this stuff to put a T right here. Um, and yep. then you just take a piece of copper pipe and just bend it down to blow across there. Um, and, you know, when I've done it in the past, it worked okay. Um, I was trying to come up with a new design to make it work a little better, but. I, I, I think Mark good. might have one and I like the whole copper tube thing too. And that's what I used to use on the K40s and I made some prototypes, but I think he came up with another material. that's a lot more malleable and, and, and you can work with it a lot easier too. Was that you that made that little uh, additional nozzle? Yeah, I, I did. And I was just uh, something quick and dirty. Um, yeah. I intend to try a piece of copper too um, when I get around, uh, when I get around to it. But um, I was also wondering whether or not if you don't have your air balanced properly between the vertical and the horizontal air streams, if you could actually force debris back up into that nozzle if you're not careful. I'd say you it's can. possible. I've done it. <laughs> um, oh, have you? Yeah. So one of the things I'm I'm looking at doing right now is um, so I screwed off the lens cap here is taking this and drilling holes going around the surface here, but doing them at an angle so it creates kind of a cyclone wave going in there. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I was going to be doing, yes. so this is the stock valve there, and I was going to be increasing it to, come on, come off. It's going to be increasing it to this guy there. So get, a, get quite more a bit flow. more airflow through there. Um, but by doing that spinning effect, it should keep all the debris off the, the surface of it. That's real similar to those laminar flow uh, yeah. nozzles that people are 3D printing for the lasers too. Yep. So, yeah. Um, now, Mark, you might have seen this. Let me, uh, then that might have been, but, but I put one of these on and I could test it with the Beam Buddy uh, and see what what horizontal flow does to keep the work clean. I know when I did it on acrylic, here's my result. Uh, here's here's doing it um, just with the nozzle, you know, the conical nozzle, and this is when using the other one. And there's still debris there. Um, and and then I just wa rinsed it with water, uh, but the output was almost identical. But this was a little bit better to clean up. Yeah, I think there's a lot of fiddling around with it that uh, you know you can you can play with it to get it exactly right. And that little yeah. that little thing that uh, you just showed um, that's pretty reasonably priced. Too. Isn't it like thirty bucks or something? I think it's like thirty bucks. Yeah, that's a lot of hardware for thirty bucks. It it, it is, and you know it adds a little weight too. And you have to watch out for that stuff hitting the wires. Uh, as a matter of fact, the other day, mine grabbed a wire on my little pressure monitor that I had didn't have tied up good enough and pulled it out in front of the beam and caught my wire on fire. So <laughs> I had to rewire it. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's worked pretty good for the stuff that I, I haven't tried it with the HR head. And, and I think I will. I'll get a piece of some MDF or something. Just burn the crap out of it <laughs> with that HR head. And see. Replace that. Replace that tube with uh, another another piece and, and and put it in a vise and squish it, and so you get more of a a flat nozzle. Yeah, more of an air curtain, you know, because yeah. they make those nozzles there. And I thought about that too because mine did come. I thought I had a picture of it. Yeah, see, mine it, in their picture, it almost looks like they do that, but mine did not come crimped at all. But that's exactly what I was thinking about doing was putting a small flathead screwdriver in there, and then crimping it in the vise, so I get a nice uniform orifice. You know, and uh, yeah. try to get that more of a fan out of it. That so ribbon, if you try a that, ribbon of uh, air. Yeah, if you try that, take this piece off completely. Um, that way you'll get a little bit more clearance to get that tube more right on the lens to blow straight across it. I don't know if I want to do that. My idea is just to have enough airflow across the orifice of the head uh, to just blow the smoke away. Kind of like when you walk into a restaurant or into a convenience store and that overhead squirrel cage fan kicks on to yep. keep all the crap out when you walk in and keep the air managed a little bit better. Um, I don't know if I want to expose my entire lens to that at least i mean for experimentation it may not be bad 
Um, well, especially when it's that yeah. close. Yeah, and if you think about it, though, I mean, look at like Trotex and Epilog. I mean, they don't even run their lenses in a housing. It's just right. You know, it's, it's, it's they're, they're quite a ways away, though. Yeah. Not with their HR head or their <laughs> HR lens. It gets really close, too. Well, it, it does get really close. Um, but yeah, I think their airline is hardline. You know, I don't know if there's any adjustability. They can't go closer than where their little air outlet is on there, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, but I, and I, I hooked mine up. Compressor. Yeah, and Mark, I just ran another airline, and I've got my low stage air coming out just on that enhancer, and the high stage air comes out the conical nozzle. So that how way, it's one or the how other. How do you get them to run si uh, simultaneously? So, well, they don't run simultaneously. Yeah, it's one or the other. So if I choose low stage, it'll be my enhancer. And if I choose high stage, it'll be the nozzle. Oh, so so if you have the enhancer, then you have no air coming out the nozzle? Right. Oh, I don't like that. Right. No, but that, that did give me an idea, though, because I've got a spare kit for the high-low. Uh, maybe in my 35, that's already got a high-low. Maybe I could add a second high-low on there. Can that controller handle two of those at the same time? Um, I don't think so. Um, I don't know. See, and my idea is to do just that: is to keep a an air curtain, a, a, a you know, a flow across the aperture so that no smoke will get in the lens. And I've tried yeah, it with like the two inch, of, and it's worked. I like the idea of splitting a line and then putting valves to control the individual, you know, yeah, distance points. Sure, sure. And that's definitely, you'll have a lot more control over it, that's for sure, because you can play with it. Yeah, I, I've limited myself, but, you know, again, I don't dial in a whole lot of stuff either. So I'm, I'm going to just use it as a selector on which, which nozzle I want to use, and then I'll just adjust my pressure accordingly on that one. But I don't know. We'll see. Because as more people start playing with all this stuff, I'm sure more, more info will come out, and I may have to change my design and stuff, you know, to keep up with some of the new stuff everybody finds. So uh, Patrick had a good little setup too on his a couple of sessions ago. Remember he pulled his head out and he had uh, some adjustments, some needle valves and stuff in line to be able to do kind of what Mark was talking about uh, on that one that he had. So. Yeah, Brian's like a rough framer, not a finished carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would agree with that. I would agree. He's with like that. he like he like he develops rat rods. He just goes yeah. for it. And... <laughs> I, 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 I'll accept that answer too. <laughs> but he gets you to a good starting point to finish finessing it though. Yeah. And then I can just pick up where everybody else left off and just do it to mine after you work out all the kinks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, airflow. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything related to that that's new there's not much new that's the thing man you know with the exception of looking at new things like that there's not a whole lot of new stuff going on with the machines um trying to think of Can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely yeah i've got my nova 24 is about two years old and it i got it it does not have the that little panel up on the top left for the supplemental air Mm -hmm. So I bought, the, I bought the kit and just plumbed it straight in. But so I have my control is me running from the compressor switch to the plug in the wall and all of that. So is there going to is there any kind of a solenoid kit or anything that I can sort of upgrade it to the way it should be? Well, there is. There's a full dual air assist kit. Um, and here are the instructions on it. <clears throat> And this is about how it comes to you, uh, kind of all in a pile. Um, I wouldn't want to put one of these in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this um, is how it comes. We've had, yeah, it's, it's 400 really bucks. When I bought mine a year ago. <laughs> yeah, we've had two people buy them and two people have sent them back, I think. Uh, I didn't send mine back. Mine's did still you here. Keep yours? I kept mine. I just haven't put it in yet. I haven't had time. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an involved. Now, there's an option here. If all you need is control, you don't necessarily need high and low and all of that stuff. Uh, Cloud Ray has, and Russ, Russ Sadler uh, kind of developed this. It's the uh, air assist. And I think this is actually made to add a secondary. 
but it may not be. Let me see here if I can tie it correctly. Hey, while you're looking for that, uh, I'm looking at Jim Schaefer's um, workshop there. Two comments. One, your workshop is way too neat. Secondly, is that a beer refrigerator back there? Oh, no, that's an actual full-blown. Yeah, it's, I don't drink beer, but it's more full of soda and the wife's overflows. And okay. no, this shop is not. You're just seeing the good direction. Uh, okay. Like over here, that was a customer's dump off. Oh, where's my camera at? There we go. <laughs> Sorry. It's like, where did it go? I'm turned backwards. Yeah, there's a pile of debris laying over here on the floor that a customer dumped off. And yeah. No, it's nowhere near neat. <laughs> so thanks. here is another option on uh, an air assist kit that is a little bit more practical to install. Um, and there's schematics and everything here. And this is on CloudRay. And it shows basically, I think it'll do exactly what you're wanting it to do, which is just turn your air on and off, you know, with, with the machine, you know, with the controller. Uh, instead of having to turn it on and off all the time yourself. Uh, of course, the compressor will stay on and run autonomously, you know, and then the solenoid you'll add just so you can kick the air on and off when you need it. Okay. Is that what you're looking at? I'll, yeah, I can know. Well, it's not that I don't use need assisted um, extra air very often, but now and then I do. Yeah. And my other question was mm -hmm. um, when I got mine, that was before the talk of the cameras or maybe it was just coming out so i i really don't know why you want a camera can you kind of give me just a brief overview of how that might be helpful yeah you could lay an object in the in the bed and take an over uh you know a screenshot of it basically and it turns into your overlay and then you design right there on the material and so you can drag your art around and it's to scale and everything the accuracy i think is somewhere around a half a millimeter uh, maybe even closer. I can get it closer than that. Um, you can also use it to trace. And I'll give you, for instance, one time I laid some white uh, material down and placed this guy's AR on my bed and took a capture of it with the camera and vectorized it and did a little editing and cut out three inch foam for his case so that oh, it would be wow. custom fit. So That's you can cool. do things like that with it as well. Uh, but it's so for object you, placement and things like that. So you just laid. Uh you know, a flat piece of wood or whatever, somewhere on the on the work surface, the mm -hmm. camera would allow you to locate it and, yeah, it would, and go right to it. It'll take a snapshot of what's on your work area, on your bed, and overlay it into the design software to scale. Okay. Yeah, they're pretty accurate too, because I mean, just down to the point that I put a piece of tape on ply just to test it. And then I put a circle on the painter's blue tape, and I was able to print the test inside that circle by using the camera. Mm -hmm. And it was so all really it, simple to do. Does, does the camera get wired into the, um, the controller or nope. to Lightburn? It, it's, it has absolutely nothing to do with the laser except it happens to be stuck to it. Uh, okay. That's totally a Lightburn function. Okay, thanks. Sure, absolutely. I appreciate it. On that uh, All right. air assist, is there mm -hmm. a way to keep your air on, um, like say 30 seconds after you're done cutting? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. How do you do that? It's in the manual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, it's in. Got it. <laughs> See, mine, did, mine did that from the get go. Yeah. yeah I started right there. on for 60 seconds afterwards. The, and, uh, and the exhaust fan. Actually, 30 seconds on the air and 60 seconds on the exhaust fan. Copy. I'll put a link to this in here. Yeah, uh, the exhaust fan I don't use. I've got a big honking system to evacuate three lasers. So. Yeah. Oh. But you can cycle through each of the peripherals using the TL timer board. Uh, if you flip that switch right there, there's a little switch. If you flip it to the right, it's going to turn on three channels. It's going to turn on the exhaust, the high air, and the low air. And that's so you can test your primary peripherals and make sure that they're functioning, you know, just by flipping a switch since they okay. don't stay on all the time. And then you can use this button underneath and you'll see the channel number and then the timer associated if it has a time. Uh, and you can change, you can cycle through all of those channels, and then you can use the other two buttons to change the timer for each of okay. those. 
Uh, and Keith says his comes on and off, uh, and it looks like it sometimes stays on after the job a little bit, and sometimes it goes off immediately. Um, I um, it, that's possible. We'd probably have to get a short video of the TL timer in action while you're running a job, so that we can watch the indicators and kind of have an idea. Um, I don't think that's. I mean, anything's possible um, from from a programming standpoint. I don't think it can change unless there's something goofy going on but we can have a look at it if um if you want you can submit a ticket or whatnot and we can have a look i got a question since we're talking about similar stuff um yeah i know you have an article for it but it might be a good conversation uh you know we have that ac infinity fan that we got the s10 how mm -hmm. do i you're pulling it up how, how do i uh plug that into the tl timer you don't so oh yeah well, well you use one of these adapters okay um and then that'll convert it from that you know that c13 or c14 whichever one that is the male or the female uh okay. to a standard thing and then you just plug your fan into there and then that will be controlled uh, that's it the fan after that that's it you just because that's what it controls is the main power of the of the uh, you know centrifugal fan so this right. will also control the power on and off to your uh aftermarket fan your inline fan Sweet. And, and yeah, and those AC infinities, every time they're powered off, as soon as they're powered back on, I believe they automatically go into high, high draw. Yeah. Now, uh, there is one thing that I've seen with those. Uh, when you first turn them on, if they're in the box for a while, I think there is, like you say, some memory in that controller, but sometimes it's off. So if you plug your fan up, if you get an in infinity fan and you plug it up to the laser and you go to run your first job, the fan may not kick on because you never turned it on the first time with the controller to at least let it wake up and say, hey, here I am. And and along those same lines, it's a good idea to do that and get your controller set to the speed you want it to be set and then plug it into the machine for it to get operated after that. You make sure you hold the button for five seconds, or was it five seconds after you turn it off? Because that's the only way that'll hold the memory. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but there there is a trick if you don't if you want it to run in high power all the time, um, just unplug your controller and it automatically defaults to high power. Ah, don't even use the controller. Don't even use the controller. If you unplug it, it automatically turns everything on high power. Yeah. Now, Keith, you're right. Those inline fans have little 24 volt DC fans in them or, or motors in them or whatever. And then not a lot of torque, so they do have to spool up. They take a lot longer to spool up than than the centrifugal cap start motors that that are in those green ones um however once it does get up to speed they blow those other ones away they move a lot more a lot more air unless you have a setup like we do and and let, unless you have a setup like you do every once in a while there's a a chink in the armor i don't know yeah but yours look so straightforward though i mean you know what i mean there's nothing real crazy so Hey, Brian, uh, do you want to talk about red dot pointers for a minute? I do. Yeah. Um, do they do they sort of go out of focus every now and then, or can you focus them, or you know what what do you, what's the life cycle of those things, and uh, how do you care for them? They're they're real cheap uh, because it's hard to find high quality you know cat toys with a wire coming out of the end of them. You just can't get good ones, but they never look perfect. Um, and they're not intended to be f totally focused until they hit that last thing, but they should be a, a tight enough beam that you can see it on the mirrors a little bit. Now, this is something that happens quite a bit, or not quite a bit, um, five times. It's happened five times in two years, I think, uh, where you actually get some flashback, uh, some reflected energy um, from stainless or doing tumblers or metals or something reflective uh and it can actually burn the lens and then it'll of course mess up your what focus. is that is that the lens off that red dot that is the lens of the red dot absolutely and it is adjustable you'll see that there's some uh place where you can span it you know and, and adjust it um but yeah that that's the inside of it and they're cheap uh we've got them here if if you're in a wonder we'd keep a box of them you know and if they go out we'll send them to you uh what and then if you need what Get is that uh, that adjustment for? Is that for a focus? That's focus. Yeah, that's the focus for that laser module. Um, and then we've got a link to it, but make sure you have red dot pointer selected. They're only 10 bucks if you need to get a replacement and you happen to be out of warranty or something. 
but that goes over that a little bit. But yeah, they, they do fail. Um, I've I've had them actually short out the TL timer board. Um, so if you ever have a problem with a red dot and you notice another problem associated, unplug it from the TL timer board, um, and and it should fix it. But I've had them short completely down before also. Is your seeing? Are you seeing something odd out of yours? Is your no. No, I just, uh, I, I mean, I see, con, you know, uh, comments about it every now and then, and I was thought, well, you know, maybe yeah. it'd be of interest if people, you know, sure. were uh, curious about it. Yeah, and that, that's one of the easier things to pop in. You can replace one of those in a couple of minutes, and then just hopefully just dial it back in. So, but yeah, they they do get a problem every once in a while. So, and. It's that same beam combiner kit. How about the half mirror? Is that thing, are they pretty stable? Uh, the beam combiner? Yeah. I don't know that we have even sold any beam combiners. I think somebody dropped one. We've had an issue the other day where one was split. But other than that, I can't remember the last time we sent out a beam combiner. Um, I've got a little bit of info on those here and some places to get. I think I had some place. I guess I didn't finish the article yet. Do I need to shit? Let me kick it back on here. Um, I the usually orientation wipe matters. it off when I do my my optics maintenance. Yeah, that's fine, and it's in the back. I mean, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't see a whole lot. Um, but and it, there's, we don't have a lot of calls on them, hardly. Yeah, I don't know if I, other than that one, I don't think we've had any calls on them. So they seem to last a pretty good time, especially if you clean them every once in a while. Yeah. So. I had a question on the uh, Thundercam again. Uh, uh -huh. Location for a 51, I got mine yesterday. I was going to put it at the front of the main glass. That seems to be where it picks up the area best. Is that about right? Um, let me go to the simplified. Yeah, what you, what you ultimately want is just to be as centrally located as you can. Uh, let me pull up a visual here that'll help. Basically, yeah. what I did is I just take a string with a washer and I open the lid up and I let the washer hang there and I figured out where the center of the bed was at and place it there. A good idea. That's that's the view. On a fifty-one, but yeah. Now on a on a fifty-one, you're not going to see the back couple inches of the bed or whatever. And on a sixty-three, there's even more behind the hinge line, but that really doesn't matter. Right. Um, that'll make your center off a little bit as long as it's cal you know it'll calculate when you output your pattern but you just basically want a, a good central view of the entire bed now that's not to say you can't have it at an extreme angle light burn will compensate for that you can have it sideways you can you can put it in there upside down it doesn't matter light burn will figure it out as long as it can see this entire work bed but the the smoother and you know more overhead central view you have of it the better it's going to be Okay, so, thanks. And that is with the lid open uh, and uh, for that view. And it's a good idea uh, to maybe use a command strip or something like that. Uh, you can stick it up there temporarily, plug it in, have a look, and that way you can move it around. I, I stuck mine on first thing and then realized that I might not want it right where I had it, and then I broke the mount all to pieces when I tried to break it off of there. So, um, Keith pulling the power plug and plugging it back in went to last use power setting okay on off of the thunder power socket will keep the setting you set it has for me and i don't run my laser very often um so i think that might have something to do with that controller or not having one at all if you just want to run at high speed if what travis said was uh accurate i don't know if you've yanked your connect controller off to see if it'll do that at least i know on mine it does it but i'm running s and s12 mm -hmm. so yeah, and for you guys looking at the those series, and I hear this every once in a while too, uh, you don't have to look at the T series. That has a temperature sensor in it, and the controller is fancier, and you can run a couple of fans off of one controller. That's for the like the hydroponics industry, uh, where you run multiple fans for your grow room. Um, so that's not really a unless you just really need to know what your temperature of your exhaust gas is, which I don't know why you would actually. So, but they're a lot more expensive, more stuff to break. And it's the same motor, same fan. So, yeah, I just bought the 63 and uh, I was thinking about the inline. 
Um, so you think the eight or the ten or twelve? If it's just a single S or a single sixty-three, uh, eight would be just fine. Um, you could run a ten, but you're going to be uh, necking it down quite a bit. Um, the thing with uh, those uh, Infinity uh, fans is you want to keep them as close to the the main exit. I don't want water. Uh, the longest laser. Then you want it really short going from the fan to the outside of your house. Um, they do a lot better at sucking air than they do uh, pushing air. Um, so like mine, I run, you know, three lasers off of a single S12. Um, and I probably have oh, 30 feet of 12 inch round duct work um, before it. And then uh, only about eight feet after it. So um, the other thing also, if uh, you don't mind spending the extra money on it um it really will help you in the long run is i had a custom filter box made that goes right before my fan um and i just run those cheap like three dollar green wire or uh, mesh type filters in it um and instead of having to clean out and dismantle my fan clean it out all the time just pull a filter chuck it put a new one in so they work really good at, good at that so basically just make like a little plenum for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a few people that have done that. Uh, they might have even shown it in the in the groups. I think Glenn had one made just to use you know, whatever filters you want to use, I guess. And we had talked about static filters and all kinds of different washables and, and all kinds at one point that could go in there. So I guess the sky's the limit as far as that goes. Yep. Yeah, I've, I found those uh, green floss type ones. They mm -hmm. You get them at Lowe's. They come in, it's either a four or five pack for like 10 bucks. Yeah. They, they work great. You know, I, I tear through about one filter a week. So. Yeah. Brian, do we have a login of the uh, webinars, what was covered in this webinar? Because we went over that back, I believe, what, in... January or February sometime, Glenn was showing his, and I had one made, right. and, and uh, it, was, it, it was helpful. It, it was like Mike getting ready to do his. It might show up in the transcripts if you can get to them, and then GoTo only holds it for a year. So if on the YouTube, I, that was before I started putting descriptions. So it may be a little bit hard to find. But I'm, I'm trying to at least add some – some kind of description or keywords in it, you know, going forward. So, uh, but yeah, th that'd be hard to trace without me sitting there watching them, which I'm probably not going to do. <laughs> okay. So, but yeah, they, they, we did look at that pretty extensively in a few of those uh, earlier ones. And maybe if someone ever happens, happens across it, we, uh, maybe make a note and we'll go back and add some uh, descriptions. Yeah. Well, and if you want, next week when we log in, I can log in from my cell phone also, give a tour of mine, because mine was actually um, fully engineered. So it, it basically, I gave my engineer the specs, and they designed it out, told me exactly what I needed to do. Um, so instead of, you know, I, I don't want to say hodgepodge, because I'm sure everyone's works just fine, but um, since I'm in a huge commercial space, I had to really follow all that. And so we actually went through, spent the money, and had an engineer figure out exactly what we needed. Cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd like to see that too. Yeah. So. So is there a, so like I said, in a couple of weeks, we'll be doing uh, that video on the Facebook group and stuff on, uh, you know, how to make money this fall or early fall, I should say, late summer um, with your laser. Is there anything that anyone wants tutorials done on so I can get things planned up? Well, like me, I'm, I'm going to be brand new on everything. So. I'm uh, excited for whatever video or whatever help I can get. I, like I, I said, I, I just uh, paid in full on my 63. You know, it was ter you know, it was like, oh, man, I finally quit dragging my feet and pulled the bullet, you know, put it to my head and shot, you know. So now we're out there. Now I don't have a choice but to learn something. There you yeah. go. There you go. So I put a link. I did I did do something different. I, I, you just reminded me. Uh, I made a, a request if somebody has not an article that they don't see, uh, you know, you can request one. And also I would encourage you guys at the bottom, if you see an article, maybe not so much if you find it helpful, but if you don't actually click no and tell me why, because that'll create a ticket and I can go in there and fix it. Otherwise I'll never remember it. If you PM me, if, even if I see that, cause I don't even check my PMs anymore. 
uh, I may not ever see it. So when you click no over here, it'll give you a, you know, a little choice uh, to add some stuff. And I like that feedback. If something's not right, please tell me. And uh, I'll go in there and try to make arrangements and adjustments. So just thought I would throw that out there real quick. So, well, cool. We made it to another four o'clock mark. That's hey, awesome. It's one o'clock here. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So, well, Before cool. you go away, you referenced, you referenced a Facebook group. What is your Facebook group you were talking about? Well, there's quite a few that say Thunder on them. Uh, some of them are kind of official. Some of them are not so much. Uh, I typically gravitate uh, to the Global Thunder Lasers user group. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think so. And I think that's the one That's one that you're the admin of, correct? Um. We are now, yeah, we're we're in there along with other, you know, with every with all the other admins that were already on the page because that wasn't originally our page. I'll put a link to it. Um, then there's others. There's the Thunder Laser Owners Group, and then there's all these other groups that people create, and I'm good with that. But here's the deal: if somebody puts a bad piece of information, and, and you might have seen this, somebody has a question and they post it on seven different Thunder forums, right? And then I have to go in there and answer it on all seven, because if I don't, then they're going to go, that guy's not answering questions. Or if it's wrong, I have to go in and correct it seven times. So social media is a nightmare to work with anyway. Um, but if I had to choose, I, I typically stick to the global users just because I don't have time to check 40 different groups, you know. So. Um. Brian, with that, uh, if you get a chance, if you can generate me and send me over a new uh, video key. Uh, to post on that one because the one I was looking at the one I have oh, for the live stream a stream key for your OBS or whatever okay yeah yeah, yeah the only I'll one that, that I have is the one for the Thunder Laser fan page okay yeah I can do that let, okay, me, you gonna be, on, let me make a note are you going to be broadcasting your videos on all of them or just one specific one so typically um, whichever one so in this case it looks like uh, Brian's uh, pushing everything more over towards the global thunder laser um, so I'm only going to be streaming to that one um, and then I'll stream also to uh, my Mad Moose Labs uh, Facebook as well as our YouTube channel um, so it'll, it'll hit all three at the same time um, and then as we get going later towards uh, uh, Christmas time when I'm really slammed um, they'll just basically be pre-recorded sessions um, that will they'll look like live streams, but you know they're right. all pre-recorded. Um, but that way, people can still follow along and whatnot. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Well, cool guys. Well, I better jump off here and go answer some questions. Does anybody have anything else last minute before I pull the plug? All right, cool. Well, I appreciate everybody joining us, and uh, I guess we'll see you next week. Thank you. Cool. All right. Hi, right, thank care, you guys. You have a good one. All right, all right.